Hi, and welcome back to another edition of our Education Spotlight. It is hot here at the beach today, and I'm so excited to have Dr. Robin Rockline with us. Robin, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. It's so great to see you, and I miss seeing you this summer because we didn't have our, our summer music camp, but so excited that we can still learn from you uh, through Zoom. Yeah, it is fun. It's fun. I did miss it a lot, though. I was um, over at Johanna Fincher's house for dinner, and we were chatting about how much we missed Venice Symphony Music Camp this year. It's We are going through so many changes, and we can't wait to get back to normalcy, too. So just seeing your smile is, is helping get us there. Dr. Rockline is part of our of our education team. She's on our education committee. She's part of our, well, she's one of our wonderful teaching artists that goes out into the school, part of our symphony in the school program. Um, what's that like to go out into the school and just have a, a group of third graders kind of look at you and, and then craft them into singers? It's a, it's a joy. It's an absolute joy to teach kids about music and they um, and being in teams with other artists, um, we go out with a harpist as well as a pianist and another singer, and we have a really great time, and we share our art with the kids and with each other, and um, it's, a, it's, it's a sheer joy. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you are a vocalist, and uh, that's one of the things that I, as I try to teach singing, is there a common thing that you see that kids are doing wrong or they should be really focusing more on? Well, honestly, um, the most important thing with, with kids under the age of 14 is to have them enjoy singing. Just have them enjoy singing. Don't be hypercritical. Um, make sure that as teachers, especially, you teach them how to match pitch because that is actually a learned behavior. And a lot of people think, oh, I can't sing because I can't match pitch. Well, it just means that they never learned how to match pitch. That's all that is. I had a sixth grade teacher. Um, I actually was fifth grade. I auditioned for choir in fifth grade and I won't tell you her name but I'll never forget her because she told me I couldn't be in choir because I couldn't sing and um that's just not that's just not true obviously I'm a singer <laughs> so I got into junior high and I had a teacher just sit down with me for 10 minutes she taught me how to match pitch and the rest is history you know so I think taking taking the joy out of singing for children is is first stop no no just have them sing songs, have them be fun, have them enjoy it. Um, I think for younger kids, it's about just singing and exploring their voices and all the different funny sounds they can make and to not um, quash any of the joy and the sound making. Even if animal noises, explore what your human voice can do. I think that's number one important. Um, number two, um, just let them be kids, let them sing. Um, I, my, big, my biggest thing that I usually use with kids that, um, they like to sing really loud, like shouting. Um, so I say never louder than lovely. <laughs> and I think if you do those two things, you're gonna be on your path to success. Wonderful, we've got a chance to hear you as a soloist in the past. You've been part of one of our performers on stage for our Link Up concerts that typically would happen in May, where you're up on stage singing along with the Venice Symphony. What's that like performing with a group like the Venice Symphony behind you? You know, it's really fun. Um, Johanna and I are in a group called the Cool Quartet. And we've also performed as soloists with the Cool Quartet with the Venice Symphony. So that's been really fun. Um, I think it's it's really a joy to perform with um, advanced music like opera numbers and even pop music because we've done a lot of pop with um, the Venice Symphony and things in the past. Um, so it's really fun and an enjoyable experience on that level. And then on the level where you're doing a children's concert for the SITS program, it's a, it's a whole other level of fun. <laughs> because you're in, a, you're in an auditorium where you've got hundreds of children singing with you and dancing with you and having a great time. And, and it's absolute joy. And I, I mean that. Complete joy. Really, really a load of fun. I, I got the song, Oh Yeah, you stuck in my head right now oh, as you're yeah. talking about <laughs> So this week you helped us out, and I know as a non-professional singer, I'm looking forward to the senior lesson. What did you share with us this week? Um, I just tried to show you a little bit of um, warming up from my perspective as a performer of opera, and then also as a teacher for other professional students. Um, that's pretty much, you know, a little bit of my insight into how do I prepare to go in for an opera role? How do I go in... Um, to get myself ready for um, an oratorio performance, how I would warm up a male versus a female, 
Um, and I gave you, I think, two exercises that are essential. One is the lip trill, tongue trill, and the other one is arpeggios. So there you go. Well, the part of the series is whether you're seven or 77, we're all going to be learning about things. So I can't wait to learn more. And just to kind of show it what she practices, what she preaches, we've also included um, some performances, a little couple of little excerpts of, you know, Robin doing her thing. So it's so great to hear you doing, you know, leading up to what those exercises, you know, allow us to do. Yeah. And here's an interesting thing is um, I take students the age 14 and up. Um, I have a lot of professional students. Um, because of COVID-19, I don't get to perform as much with other orchestras around the area because of the concert series being canceled, et cetera. So my schedule has opened up for more voice lessons. So if anybody is interested, they're welcome to contact me and we'll see what the schedule allows. <laughs> well, you know, we might have the next opera star in the wings just ready you know, to come uh, on stage. Or Broadway, because I teach all styles. I teach church music. Broadway. I've actually taught taught metal before, like heavy metal. I have a rock singer that does metal. So, you know, it, it, all styles. <laughs> that's great. It, you know what? And that's so important. It, don't pigeonhole yourself or put on those blinders and say, no, I only do this. So coming into the world and, and being ready to try new things. And even if you have somebody who doesn't think that you're the one, you got to believe in yourself. And I'm so glad you did. Um, thank you so much for your time sharing with us this week, and uh, we can't wait to learn from you. Great. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Getting the chance to have teaching artists like Dr. Robin Rockling is huge for us at the Venice Symphony, and having her go out into the schools and be part of our summer music program is a wonderful way for kids of all ages to learn. Thank you so much. This season, the Education Spotlight series is brought to you by the Venice Symphony and also the 2020 Giving Challenge. Thank you so much for your support of our education initiatives. All right, sit up tall, get a good place to sit, and let's learn as Dr. Rockline teaches us about the proper way to warm up and get our vocal cords ready for action. I am Robin Rockline, and I am going to share with you how I warm up. So first thing is I do not warm up first thing in the morning. I wait at least two hours before I start phonating. Phonating is a fancy schmancy term for singing. Um, making sound with your voice. I usually like to talk to my mom, have a cup of coffee, uh, play with my dogs. You may hear them in the background, um, so you'll have to forgive them. Their name's Gently, the Ginger and Bentley. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just tell you um, basic warm-ups, not just for myself, but also how I would do it with other people. Um, for instance, men and women have different vowels that they prefer. So men prefer O's and O's, and women basically prefer E. Um, e is an easier vowel, and it just has to do with the way we're made. We're just made a little differently. I'm sure that a trumpet player does a different regimen than the flute player than the cello. So we're just different instruments, so we prefer different things. So um, men, usually O's and O's, women, E's. So I'll start with something like that. Also, I wanna get make sure the alignment is good, make sure the breath is going to be warmed up, which means your big major muscles, which are your abdominal muscles. I know a lot of teachers will say, sing from the diaphragm. Well, it's technically impossible to do that. Um, <laughs> you sing with the abdominal muscles. The diaphragm separates the lungs from the viscera or the guts. Um, and it really doesn't want to do anything. The abdominal muscles ensure that your diaphragm does its job and stays flat as a pancake until you tell it to release. Um, so that's kind of fun, fun fact for you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I do first thing in the morning. If I was warming up a gentleman, um, I would just start on my mouth. above a B because it's too much first thing in the morning. It's just too much or even first thing in the afternoon if they haven't sung. If they haven't done anything, they haven't sung, um, uh, they, they need to do a little bit before they start phonating. So that's why we started on an easy A. Ah. Low voice females, I'll do the same thing. Um, then what we do is we usually do a lip trail or a tongue trail. So a lip trail is, looks like this, looks really funny. And we do it phonating on a pitch. The tongue trill, which is the same thing, it's just using the tongue. We go all the way up and all the way 
down. Um, and that is to, it's for two purposes. The first thing is to make sure you have the amount of pressure that you need to phonate properly, because that will give you the exact amount of pressure you need. And that just the edges of the chords are touching. No mass, it's not singing, it's a trill. It's like absolutely weightless singing. And it will enable the singer to place the pitch properly in their face, right? Because we have these big pockets of space, which is what our resonator is. We're looking for big spaces to ring in. So what we'll do is we will, um, I call it the sniff and lift. As you lift and you open everything because you have a big sinus cavity here and a sinus cavity here, you want to create a pocket and then you want to put the sound in that pocket. And doing the lip trill and the tongue trill really enables you to do that. And everybody's different. A lip trill may be easy for one person and it may be a hard thing for another person. So I'm, I always, I teach them both and I have them try them both. And then I have them um, go home and work on it because usually it's not an easy thing right off the bat. When I had to do the tongue troll, I thought I was going to die <laughs> the first time, and it was in a master class. That was fun. Um, but then I went home, and I worked on it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best tool ever, once you figure out how to do it. So I usually let them go home and do it, and then that's one of the devices that we use when we first warm up. So I'm just going to show you what I do, because I literally did not sing today at all. I talked a little bit. So you're going to get my voice in a raw form. So what that means is you may hear some snap, crackle, and pop. A lot of people, a lot of teachers are like, oh, you should never do that. That would never be okay. But it's a reality when you have a mechanism with phlegm and you need to get the phlegm out in the morning and you're going to hear crazy stuff when you wake up. And singers that, that, you know, don't, that pretend that they're immaculate, it's just, it's not a reality. So I wanted to show you, you might hear some things and that's what is going to be a natural sound when you warm up and it's okay. It's okay. All right, here we go. stop right there because I um, don't want to sing out of my tessitura. Tessitura is a fancy word for where your voice sits easily. Um, and I am a soprano, so I prefer to be on the staff or a little bit above it. Um, I do have low notes. I get hired to sing alto all the time, which is fine because I do have low notes, but I don't want to hang out down there because it's very fatiguing when you're singing out of the range that you are comfortable in. Um, so it has to be for the right thing. <laughs> So that's why I try not to venture too low. Now, if I was warming up a gentleman, I would, of course would go a little bit lower for the baritones and the basses. And I would keep it in definitely the soprano, like soprano one register for the gentlemen who are tenors, because they, they have a shorter range than most people. I know you don't think about it that way, but they really do. Um, baritones have an enormous range. Tenors have a smaller range. They just hit higher notes um, in written music. That's the difference. Um, so I would definitely warm different voice types in different ways is the deal. So you're getting the second soprano version today. Um, so if I had trouble phonating, and sometimes if my chords are thick, um, there's lots of reasons why you would have edema. We're not gonna get into that today because that's a whole nother lecture. <laughs> we don't want that, we just want a little taste. Um, so what you would do is you would basically um, sputter on the note. If your abdominals were not working properly, your, your lip trill or your tongue trill would sputter, right? It would just like kind of stop and start. I tell people to smooth it out. So it's really smooth. So the support is consistent and even. So for me, the tongue trill 
um, is what I use because I'm able to do it now. And when I started, I couldn't do it. Um, and some people pick up on the tongue twirl like that, so people don't. So then I move on to like, um, um, what I do when I'm doing an opera roll, let me just be frank with you, is I actually warm up to the second lady trio um, where Tomino comes in and he's saying, to him, to him, to him, to him, to him, to him, and I go, and I, I actually tongue trill to the entire orchestra intro before Tomino sings. I, I tongue trill all of Tomino. I go all the way through the trio once with a tongue trill. Then I go back and I start singing. I'll tongue trill. I'll re rewind the recording. I'll tongue trill through the intro, through Tomino, and right before I come in on, then I'm ready to sing. But it takes all of that time to warm my body up if I'm going to sing an opera. Because it's, it just, everything sits really easily. It feels so good to sing that music. Just sits just perfectly. Um, so that's what I actually warm up to if I'm going to a gig. I'll do that. And then if, if I feel lots of freedom on the shtia, um, I can tell I'm not warmed up yet uh, <laughs> by the way it feels. It's the way it feels. It might not sound any different to you guys, but it feels, there's a feel to it. If I'm really warmed up, it just flies out of my face. Um, so that always gets me ready. If I'm singing something low, like I'm doing Pirates, Ruth Pirates, and that's all low stuff because it's, it's sort of musical theater-esque because it's Gilbert and Sullivan, it's um, operetta. So I'm singing a lot with my chest voice, which I normally don't do. So I'll warm down and I'll actually sing, like um, tongue trill through some of my low stuff to get the low warmed up. So you kind of want to do that. It just depends on what you're going to be singing for the day. Um, and then make sure that's all ready. And that's what I do when I sing opera. When I go for an oratorio to warm up, um, usually I'll run through the piece. I'll make sure everything feels smooth. I remember what the, what the markings were and what we did with the orchestra and what I need to listen to and what the conductor and I were talking about on what we want to do for, for phrasing, breaths, artistry, etc. cetera. Um, and I'll do that and make sure that I've gone through everything, sung through everything once for the day. Now, if I'm doing a Verdi Requiem, I will tongue trill warm up, I will look at a few things in my score and I just save my energy. Because by the time I, there's a lot of singing. I'm, I'm sing, 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 sing for the mezzo soprano, you just sing. <laughs> and you sing loudly and you sing beautifully and it's awesome. Um, but I will do very minimum warm up. I will get myself free and ready and then I won't, I won't kill it. I won't over warm up because you can do that. You can wear yourself out. All right, so the next thing I would do for um, my warm up so if I hear a little crunchy at the bottom, then I do it again and try to smooth it up. And the issue is, is the goal of a singer is to have all of the registers sound the same. They should sound even from the chest voice to the mid voice up to the, the, the head voice and then on into the whistle register. So like for instance, women have whistle tone. That's our whistle register. That's a really high. It's when the precothyroid can't go any further. Then it pops back and then we do something else. It's like, it's sort of like um, string players where you dampen the strings to get the higher pitches. That's what women do. Men do falsetto, and we can't do that. We're not made to do that. Men's falsetto, their vocal cords come together normally. Okay, so it kind of looks like, I guess this would be a good angle. This is the superior view, like that. And actually what happens when men sing falsetto, it's just, same thing, the cricothyroid rocks forward, they can't go further to go higher, and they have to go higher. So this comes back, and then they do something unique, like we did Russell's register. They just sing with the middle of their vocal cords, right? So it's just, let me 
There we go. Just the middle of the vocal cords vibrate. And that's why it sounds breathy sometimes is because you've got all this air going through and just the middle of the cords are touching and that's falsetto. So I don't have that. So I work the whistle register and that particular exercise helps me warm up that particular register. I go up and I go really high so that I have to go through all and access all of the registers and try and make them even and smooth. Okay. So that's a little bit of how I warm up and what I do when I warm up. All right, uh, it's been great talking to you and I think Tim wants me to sing something for you. So I'm gonna do a little bit more warming up and then come back with that. All right, bye. Hi everybody. Tim asked me to sing a little bit for you. Um, I don't have any videos to share with you because a lot of the companies that I work for, they don't allow me to share videos of me performing um, unless you buy a ticket. So we decided that I would just sing a couple of snippets of some things for you. So I decided we would just cover all the categories of mezzo-soprano type roles and call it a day. So I hope you enjoy this. This is Non so più cosa son cosa faccio by Mozart. Non so più cosa son cosa faccio arrivo un cuore son non è ghiaccio ogni luna che torni colore ogni donna mi fa pavitore ogni luna but not least, a little bit of Carmen. Just a little teaser. Okay, so 
um, thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you all in person really soon. Um, I have, what's upcoming for me? I am doing the Opera Orlando Gala um, in September. So if you want to buy a ticket to the Opera Orlando Gala, feel free because I'll be singing there. I'm singing some Rosina from um, Barber of Seville. I'll be singing Carmen. I will be singing, oh gosh, um, some Rigoletto Quartet and some Lachman and all that fun stuff. Uh, then after that, I will have, I'm scheduled to do three operas next year. I'm going to be doing um, Hansel and Gretel. I'll be singing The Witch for Opera Orlando. I'm singing for Opera Tampa. I'm singing Ruth and Pirates of Penzance. And I will also be singing Suzuki and Madame Butterfly. So I hope you all stay well and thank you for having me on. It's a real honor. Bye.